All right, and welcome to episode two of my devlog for Project Thanatos. I think I'm going to stick with the name this time. Uh, so a lot has changed um, from uh, episode one and two. For one, I've updated the the uh, game engine to uh, 4.26. It was 4.25 before. Um, so I have access to more ray tracing options um, and just a lot more options and a lot better options. Um, I added a bunch of these reflection uh, uh, cubes around to make the light a little more bouncy, I guess, make it bounce off more. Um, I added enemy types. Uh, so this is the base enemy. Um, get out of there. Actually, let's go into full screen on this one. Uh, so I added base enemies. Um, everything kind of just looks a little more high quality. I added um, some some fog uh, to the area to give it a little bit more atmosphere. Um, and through here, this hasn't changed too, too much from what I remember. Um, and through here is where you'll see the big change. This guy is, uh, as you can see, there's no key here anymore. Uh, this guy is now the key. You kill him, this door unlocks. In here is where everything really has changed. I actually just went back and watched episode one, and I was kind of astonished by the amount of, uh, of progress between one and two. Um, there is a month between, so I'm going to try and do a video a month uh, just because... I don't want the video process to take up too, too much time um, where I could be actually making progress on the game. Um, so once or twice a month is kind of where I'm leaning. Um, anyway, I added this, um, a few of these, um, and instead of doing individual lights um, like I did for the, the candles and everything, I'm just adding... Uh, planes, light, light planes or rectangular lights um, that would have missed a lot more light but is a lot more um, a lot better for the, the performance. Um, also I updated the way that the level streaming works as you can see there's no more uh, yellow streaming bounds so each level is actually loaded when and unloaded when I open and shut a specific door so this level over here isn't loaded until this door is open. And as soon as this door shuts, this entire level will unload. Um, I did that primarily because if I just walked close to this door last time, this entire level would load and there was always like a little hitch. Um, and if I was just over here, it would do the same thing. Um, so I figured this was a much nicer solution. It also allowed me to split this main area up a little bit more. Um, so this area over here, which I've turned into a bedroom um, that I'm going to make the first boss level, actually, um, is actually unloaded until this door opens. When this door shuts, this area is unloaded. <clears throat> um, so it just improves performance so, so much. Um, this area has changed a lot. Um, I'll talk about this here in a moment. Um, basically in this area, I just added a ton of decoration, a ton of aesthetic work. Um, I moved this, actually I prefab this, um, which is a nice new plugin that I just got, um, that allows me to essentially bundle series of objects in a prefab, uh, kind of like the way Unity works. Um, just makes it a lot easier to, to move things that have a lot of individual pieces. Um, and here, instead of, again, doing the individual candle light, I'm just doing a single light over a group of candles, um, which I think looks a lot nicer. Um, then I added and, yeah, added this hallway, and it looks really freaking good. Like, I'm really, really impressed with the way this looks. The light shafts coming up through the grate, it all just looks really, really nice. Then I have this area. Again, this is another kind of loading area. Um, except this one's not necessarily needed. Um, and then it's because as soon as you walk through this door, um, when you open this door, this area loads. When you shut this door, this area unloads. Um, this area is the newest one. It's kind of a dining area um, that will have offshoots. 
this area will eventually lead back to the boss fight that was over there and it'll essentially create one large loop um, and then there's this area which is an offshoot here go into here this is more of a testing area for now um, it will eventually be a garden area like a garden level and it'll um, probably be garden boss but um, I just want to explain what these are these are going to so the green ones are going to be like checkpoints so like if you pass when you pass through one of these it will save the current game iteration where it is where like what enemies are around and all of that what enemies are dead what enemies are alive so when you die you'll be respawned at one of these and I'm debating if I want to do a complete save um, or if I, I'm probably going to do a little of both. When you respawn, I think I'm just going to have it res like, just set your location here. It's not going to actually load from a save file. Um, and it'll just set all the enemies in, in the game to hundred percent, which if they're dead, it won't matter. Um, this one will harm you. So if you're inside of it, it'll harm you. And if you're inside of this one, it will heal you. Um, and yeah i'm gonna actually pull up a working portion of the game and hopefully obs doesn't freak out if it does i will cut here and load it up when it's not um actually i think last time i had to exit out of unreal engine for it to not uh freak out so let me make sure everything is saved and close everything is saved there we go. Um, so I'm going to launch a working copy of the game. And we'll see how Unreal Engine... I mean, uh, it seems like... Seems like OBS is having a good time. Um, I did, again, improve performance, like, a lot. Um, so it shouldn't run too, too badly. Um, probably the, the music is overwhelming, um, I'll have to fix that in, uh, in post, I guess. Um, I did update a um, little bit of the options, um, mainly going to the controls. I added a weapon wheel, um, and I added attacking for the enemies, and the same thing for the, uh, the keyboard. And I'll show you the weapon wheel and all the UI here in a second. Um, I did also add... Uh, hopefully this I can get something up and running for ray tracing and DLSS. Um, I don't know if that will end up happening or I'll have to scrap that idea. Or if it's really even needed at all. And here we load in. If you look in the top uh, top left, you can see our health HUD. That's both health and stamina. So I added stamina basically when you're you're running. Um, it will use it. <clears throat> Down here, it's, uh, the first enemy. I'll start fighting him. He's pretty easy. It just took a few swings, and he'll drop. A sword. Really, really proud of this UI the way I got it. Um, it will follow you. And I'll show you with the next enemy that also they have HUD. Um, and the weight doesn't affect like an inventory size or anything like that. Um, it's more how fast it can swing. Um, also, this is your weapon wheel. Currently, I only have two options, and this doesn't actually do a, a thing. Um, so, if I have the sword and I switch to fist, nothing will happen. I haven't uh, actually done anything with that yet. Um, but if I pick up the sword, um, I can swing it, which has that little animation. I'm still very much working on the, the sword play, um, or just the, the combat in general. Um, but so far, how I have it, I'm I'm kind of liking it. Um, so I'm gonna go up. I move the key, 
from here and everything is a little bit brighter as you can see um, the key is now up here well we found the key now let's see what it goes to and there is uh, their sound effects so um, I have various dialogue options um, I should have showed you with the door here um, and there's the HUD on this guy so you can see um, that little indicator and then his health and again sword play is very very basic right now and when he dies he'll just kind of ragdoll um, you can hit him with your sword um, and uh, after a certain amount of time they'll actually disappear which is safe performance they'll be deleted um, and this area is fairly much, is a lot the same. Um, I did just add a global light, which makes everything a little brighter. Um, I'm gonna have to fix this, this is in the wall. Um, as I said earlier, this is the, the big one. Also, the forbs. It's there, um, it's just under a shadow, because it's baked. Um, so I'll have to, to make that um, not baked basically just always dynamic which those like four squares there it shouldn't make a difference but um, either that or I'll make that uh, always there essentially uh, this area again it's pretty much this is where it's big um, here this will be the, uh, the sound ah it's locked must be a key around here somewhere I have to find the key so I recorded, I think it came out to a hundred and something dialogue options um, that are for a ton of different uh, situations. Um, and I'll sprinkle those around. Um, there is this gate. Must be a key around here somewhere. Which is, you can't actually open that way. You actually have to go over here and a book. And it'll say pull book. And there'll be a cutscene that'll open up the way to the next area. Um, and then here's the second area all lit up. And this is a healing zone again. So you can walk in here and you will be healed. I was going to make it so you regen health over time. Um, but I kind of like these better. Um, there are weapons here. None of these are actually, you can pick them up or anything. They're just more there for looks. Um, and walk through here. Again, I really, really like the way that the light pierces through the, the grade. I mean, the, uh, the yeah, the grate here. It just looks really, really good. Um, took me a while to figure out exactly how to do that and get everything fine-tuned. Um, there's this area. This is the checkpoint, the healing, and then this is the harming one. And you'll see there's actually a red kind of pulsing on the end, on the edges when you're being hurt. Um, and then when you're stopping hurt, it'll kind of fade away. I'm going to add a similar one for when you're healing. And for the green one, when you walk through it, um, I want there to be a, a kind of a white border, and then in the center, it'll say checkpoint reached. Um, also, a lot of this like area is going to be just redone entirely. This one, I just started today, um, so it is very, very bare bones. And then there's these purple like particles in the air as well. Um, Anyway, so let me can't actually shut this door, of course, because something's wrong with it, so I'll just leave it open. And we'll go through here. Added a, another type of door that's just the double door. Also, I fixed, um, I made it so when the door is in motion, it is actually um, it's not collidable, and then when it's fully shut or fully open, if you're inside, it will boot you. 
kind of uh, makes fixes a lot of issues that I was having. Um, and again, this is just a little kind of a loading area. Um, And then if you see, I can actually kind of glitch my head through here and you can see that the, everything is unloaded. I'm still working on the head thing. Uh, this place I added yesterday. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then there's this area. Nothing on any other side of these doors. Um, Step four, the and this will be an area there'll probably be a nice sword laying across here um, and let's see for the most part this is this is kind of it um, must be most, a key around here somewhere most of my work has been on getting animations in the combat just you know, right, <coughs> getting the sword to appear in my hand and kind of sway when I walk and not really go out of focus when I don't want it to was a real, real pain, but I'm really, really happy with the way it sways. Um, and, and yeah, I'm happy with the, the current state of the game. Um, and let's see. Other than that, I think I think that's just about it. Um, you know, a few a few things um, could be could be done better, could be tweaked. Um, but overall, this is two months of work on on the game so far, um, and I'm really really happy with the progress that's being made so far. Um, as you can see, the, the two versions. I mainly upgraded. Uh, I, I didn't click on the thing, so let's go back. Um, I mainly upgraded because of the GPU rendering um, that's in two point uh, four point two six um, that was not present, and it's just more accurate um, rendering. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions uh, for the, you know, future features or anything like that, please, you know, throw a comment down. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, what you guys think. Um, and in the near future, I'll be setting up a, a form for the game. I do currently have a, a page on my studio site, which is lfinteractive.net. Um, and here I'll be posting information um, on the game, you know, the about section, pictures. Um, <clears throat> these are some of the testers that I have um, and a release log. Um, if you click this, it will actually bring you to that release. Um, and you can download the, the zip file if you so wish. Um, and let's see. Yeah, I do have a, a permanent-ish version of the game that's just going to constantly be updating. Um, and I will, if you so wish, I will put that up on this website and basically you'll just it'll be just for the beta versions of the game and testing and everything and i just the only thing i would request is feedback on either bugs or issues that you come up with um or that you find or just again random ideas uh or features that you think um would make it better in, in the long run um as many of you know i i uploaded a trailer um, it's a small teaser trailer um, to the channel yesterday. And yeah, other than that, I think that will do it for me. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, catch you next time.